Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered if you could go back to a key point in your life, make a few changes, and then make yourself happy or fix a major problem you're having in your life? That's what we'll talk about today. I was actually having the first good idea I've had in decades when you rang the doorbell, but now it's gone. From the movie About Time. Today, we're going to talk about the movie About Time. Please keep in mind that there are spoilers about this movie, and so you may want to watch the movie first and then listen to this podcast. It has a great cast. It's well-written. It's a lot of fun to watch. And it's about New Year's. It has Domhnall Gleeson, the wonderful Bill Nye, and Rachel McAdams. It's just a fun movie to watch, and it gives you a lot of thought about the power of time travel. And could you really go back in time and change your life? The movie starts out with a very happy family on the coast of England. And one day his father tells the main character in the story, Tim, that they are a family of time travelers, but only the men. He can time travel, and now Tim can time travel, and he's telling them how to do it. The secret is you go into a closet, you clench your fists, and you think about a time you want to go back to. So, of course, not believing his father, he tries it out, and sure enough, it works. And suddenly, all the possibilities of the world come back to him about what he could do to change his life. His father warns him, however, it doesn't quite work as well as you think it would. You really can't make yourself happy by the things that you do in time travel. Like many people in their past and their family have actually wrecked their lives because of this ability. If you go back and make money, you'll have money, but you could be just a miserable person. So you have to be very careful about this power that you have to do something. Bill Nye suggests that you pick one thing that you think will make you happy and focus on getting that. So immediately, Tim starts thinking about what would make him happy. And he decided it would be love. He really wants to fall in love with someone he thought he wanted when he was younger. So he uses his time traveling ability to go back to a party and try to attract the woman that he thought he was really meant to be with. And while he's going back in time and trying to get this girl that he thought in high school was his dream girl, you find out a few things about it. Is that first of all, sometimes things just aren't in the cards. This person, no matter what they say, they're never going to get together with you because they're just not attracted to you. You can't fix that. The other thing that you realize in this whole process is that relationships with people are about evolving over time. And if you're not evolving over time, that will just kill the relationship. Later in the movie, she became attracted to him because of who he became, not because of this time travel. So sometimes you have to go through a process before you can actually attract the person you want or get the thing you want. Sometimes stuff just takes time, takes learning and takes maturing. And that the other problem is, too, is that if you have the power of time, you can just start making a mess out of everything. And you have to keep track of what you're doing and what you are trying to accomplish. It can get messy fast. Despite how wonderful time travel seems, it never got him the girl. He never learned the lessons it would take to get the girl. It just got complicated. So then years go by and he ends up on a double blind date with a silly roommate that he has. And he meets Rachel McAdams. They have a wonderful blind date, despite the antics of his crazy roommate. So he decides the relationship is off to a good start and he has some promise about that. But then something happens where he needs to go back in time and fix something bad that happens to someone he knows. But because he does this, he never meets Rachel McAdams. And now he feels devastated because he thought this had a lot of promise for him. So then he figures out a way, without time travel, to find other ways to get a chance to meet her. He finds out that she is completely obsessed with Kate Moss. And there is a Kate Moss exhibit in town. So he takes his sister. They spend all day waiting for her to come. Finally, she does. He actually does meet her, except in the meantime, she met somebody else and he's not all that great. So he uses his power of time travel and he fixes it so that he met her that night, not this other guy. And of course it worked. They're in love. Their relationship takes off and it is absolutely wonderful. So he was able through time travel to adjust this one thing and make life better. But later in the movie, 
as he's living his life, certain events happen and he gets to do some fun things like play ping pong with his father. His father used his time travel ability to go back into time and spend more time with his kids, which is just such a charming way of using time travel. In the end, that's what he really wanted to do. At some point, his sister has a crisis and he decides that all of this stemmed from a bad choice she made when she was at that same New Year's party where he was trying to meet the girl he really wanted to meet. So he takes her back to that party so she can fix the thing that screws everything up. And she does. And it's amazing. And her whole life gets turned around because of this one mistake, meeting this fellow that she was able to undo. So that was fantastic. Except here's the problem. When he got back into his current time, his child was no longer the same child. If you make a child, even a few minutes later, you're not going to get that same child. You're going to get a different child. Things happen in time that progress into the future. So he had to go back even further in time and undo that. So his sister still stuck in time so that he could have the child he remembered. So in the end, he saw that the time travel could really mess things up for him and his family. And so then he started using it very sparingly. So because his sister still needed help, he found other ways other than time travel to help his sister out. And that worked in the end, I think, better than the original fix. Now, a tragedy happens in his family and someone that he loves dearly is sick. And so then he uses time travel so that he can spend precious moments with that person. He has to be careful because he doesn't want to change the nature of his children, but he wanted to make sure that he was able to spend time with the person he loved the most. And so at the very end of the movie, he does have a very happy life and it has very little to do with his ability to travel back in time. He realizes that the point of life and the point of it all is to enjoy the people and the moments around us just as they are without the time travel. And I think it is for me, who's a nerd and loves time travel movies, such an awakening because in the time travel movies themselves, it's always a chance to go back and do something again. It's always this chance to fix something that needs to be fixed. The thing that it never really thinks about is the fact that, first of all, sometimes you can make things worse. Secondly, maybe the thing you want to do isn't something that should be done. Three, maybe the thing that you need to get through in order to become a better person in the future was that pain and suffering in the past. And that if you go and change that pain and suffering and try to change it into something else, you never cross that pathway that makes you better. And then the last thing is that even with time travel or the ability to be with someone through time travel, eventually you do have to say goodbye, that this isn't something that you can just extend forever. And it strikes me as interesting because I think as someone who grew up in a rough situation, people have asked me if I could wish it away, would I have? And, you know, the funny thing of it is, is I don't think I could because it made me who I am today. I think I'm resilient. I think I've overcome some things. I figured out some things about myself. And so time travel, while it sounds appealing, fixing those things that are in your life that you wish weren't, I think in the end, it probably is more poison than it is beneficial. Rachel McAdams said during an interview about this show that in the end, they learned the message that Doing it over wasn't the right strategy, but trying to do it once, the right way, is the way to go about it. But here's my challenge to you. Think about something that happened in your past that maybe would give you the temptation to try to fix if you had the ability to travel back in time. Now think about all the lessons you learned and all the things that you figured out or became a different person because this one thing happened. What would change about you now? if that thing did not exist. And now for our fun entertainment quote of the week comes from About Time. The truth is I now don't travel back at all, <laughs> not even for the day. I just try to live every day as if I've deliberately come back to this one day, to enjoy it as if it was the full final day of my extraordinary, <laughs> ordinary life. And that just sums up a wonderful movie and the point of view of whether or not you can go back and actually change your life. And 
what you should do instead. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful New Year's. I hope you enjoy your time over the holidays and we will talk to you next year.